This is the Kentucky Parkway System. It's a unique system of freeways and highways across Kentucky, with 430 total miles of mostly freeway-level roads. It's almost like the state's version of the interstate system and different from any other state highway system in the country. Today we'll go over the parkways, including their history, future, and impact on the state. The system started in 1961 with the construction of the first two parkways, the Western Kentucky Parkway and the Mountain Parkway. Those two finished construction in 1963, since we actually knew how to get stuff done back then. Expansion continued with the Bluegrass Parkway opening in 1965, Purchase Parkway in 1966, Audubon Parkway in 1970, Hal Rogers Parkway in 1971, both Cumberland and Natcher Parkways in 1972, and being complete with the Penny Royal Parkway in 1976. It's important to know all of these routes originally opened as toll roads to pay for construction costs. The 650 miles of parkways were meant to complement the 700 miles of interstate already in Kentucky to better connect more rural areas of the state. You'd think that that would be the end of the story for Kentucky's parkways, but the new millennium brought a new challenger. With the elaborate plan for I-69 across America, the parkways of western Kentucky became prime targets for the new route to go through the state. Throughout the 2000s, 2010s, and even 2020s, the Purchase Parkway as well as parts of the Penny Rail and Western Kentucky Parkways were added into I-69, which removed them from the parkway system. The interstate system isn't done preying on the parkways either. The Natcher Parkway from Bowling Green to Owensboro was lost to the new I-165 in 2019, as well as the remainder of the Penny Rail Parkway becoming I-169 in 2024. A few other routes are also at risk of joining the interstate system, such as this 39-mile section of the Western Kentucky Parkway from I-69 to I-165 becoming Spur I-569. The entirety of the Cumberland Parkway is planned to become Spur I-365, and the Audubon Parkway is planned to become Spur I-369. Now, not all hope is lost for the Kentucky Parkway system. In 2015, a new 32-mile segment of Kentucky Route 80 was added to the Hal Rogers Parkway to recover some losses. Additionally, a complete northern bypass of Somerset is planned to link the Hal Rogers Parkway to the Cumberland Parkway, as well as an expansion of the Mountain Parkway further east to Prestonsburg at US-23, and widening from two to four lanes. The Mountain Parkway and Hal Rogers Parkway are the only routes not entirely freeways, so the standards aren't really as high. Now, if you're from Kentucky, you might be wondering why I haven't mentioned the Double A Road yet. While it does have a similar sign to Kentucky's parkways, it's not actually part of the system. Perhaps we can call it Kentucky's Imposter Road and make a clickbait short out of it. Now, let's look more into the impact of these highways. The impact is most notable in eastern Kentucky, where both the Mountain Parkway and Hal Rogers Parkway have given these very poor coal reliant areas a path to some economic resurgence. There's also around 47,000 jobs in the state related to maintaining roads, though I suspect that's more about Louisville taking forever to finish their construction than the actual construction and maintenance of Kentucky's parkways. There are also a few towns which have notably benefited a lot from the parkways. Ignoring towns that happen to be at the junction of two roads, the most obvious winner is Owensboro. Kentucky built two parkways here to connect the town with the freeway to both Bowling Green and Henderson. Owensboro keeps on winning since I-165 is now signed towards Bowling Green, and the aforementioned I-369 is also planned towards Henderson. Two spurs ain't too shabby for a town of 60,000 people. Another winner I want to point out is the entire western part of Kentucky. Using interstates alone, any route to the rest of Kentucky from this part of the state will go through either Indiana or Nashville. The western Kentucky Parkway alone keeps a lot of business within state lines. And that also ties into the geography of Kentucky and where its cities are compared to cities and bordering states. There's not really a need for an east-west interstate across the entire state of Kentucky, since the cross-country traffic demand isn't high enough and the towns out west in Kentucky aren't big enough. And that's really what the Kentucky Parkway system is all about, connecting Kentucky's smaller towns to give them a bit of extra business and keep more money within the state. It's easy to argue that these towns simply aren't big enough for freeways, but in a lower density state like Kentucky, rural freeways are the most effective connections to the large markets like Louisville, Lexington, or Nashville. So, regardless of whether or not you believe freeways are actually necessary, it's hard to deny the positive impact the Kentucky Parkway system has had on connecting the state. If you enjoyed today's video, this video about America's poorest places includes an in-depth analysis of Eastern Kentucky. If you're from Kentucky, feel free to leave comments about the system, and if not, have a good one, y'all.